and here we go all right welcome back everybody welcome back boys and girls all genders in between like you know you're equally welcome you know i share a lot of love for all of you um what we do share a big love for of course is the bitcoin chart and as day traders of course we don't care whether it goes up or down or flies in circles you know we make profit uh, on every motion that we can get our our grips on but uh, of course you know just you cannot be unhappy seeing the chart just uh, make higher highs higher lows all the time it's uh, it's awesome and uh, now i'm going to be really unprofessional but i need to blow my nose i'm really sorry like I said, ah, oh, damn it, I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is so unprofessional. <laughs> lucky I'm lucky I'm not a professional streamer. Honestly, I don't care about uh, the YouTube views. All I care about is, you know, getting some reach and uh, being able to, to share this, uh, this with, 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 with a bunch of friends like you guys um so yeah like i was saying you know you cannot be unhappy with a chart that just keeps going up but of course eventually you're gonna start wondering like how far is this thing gonna go um <laughs> yeah charles no no it's not covid don't worry uh, just a bad cold yeah my, my daughter she she came home with it last week uh don't worry we we had her tested because uh yeah you you have to get your kids tested as soon as you know they sneeze because they go to school and uh now tests were negative um but nonetheless you know it, it it seems like nowadays the only disease people think about is covid you know as long as it's not covid it's okay you're good you know like what happened <laughs> <laughs> like nothing else matters you get cancer it's okay don't worry it's not COVID <laughs> but yeah you know okay let's uh, let's keep things serious so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna look again at uh, at some ranges see what kind of potential ranges of support uh, we could find areas where the where, where there would be like really big time buying opportunities just looking at the volume chart you know i would say opportunities are plenty and i i'm under the impression that not a lot of those boxes are going going to move around wow jesus yeah wow i i hope by tomorrow i feel a lot better that's awesome that's awful <laughs> I uh, had to puddle through work, like really drag myself through it. Uh, although I, you know, I love, I love the job that I have, but uh, oh, Jesus, I'm only human. <laughs> so yeah, like I was saying, I don't think those, uh, those ranges are going to shift around too much, but you know, you need to be thorough and uh, we're going to do this anyway you know like i said every time you look at the chart you need to reanalyze this entire situation because uh, you just never know okay so i'm going to roll the intro and then we are going to dive right in so sit back i hope you have your drink with you and let's do this Coffee, coffee makes the world go around. Um, all right, so let's get started. Um, the points of interest, the areas of interest that we had, um, actually most of them completely um, are completely un uh, unrelevant. Come to think about it, like this one here. You know what the heck is this? This is uh, this must have shifted so much because actually today we almost almost hit a bullish divergence with this local low over here have a look this was sitting at 42.17 and this one here 42.95 look at that that's insane so yeah you know when when you look at a rising chart like this you'd be thinking like 
this is going to turn around this is going to turn around but uh yeah no it seems like it doesn't want to turn around <laughs> it seems like it wants to keep going <laughs> this is just madness um what else do we see on the stochastics yeah maybe maybe this could be some sort of a trend line i don't know we're just gonna put it there and we're gonna keep our eyes on it i think that's the most reasonable thing to do um then let's have a look this one here as well yeah could be something but you know two touches is just not enough you need at least three touches of uh of a trend line for for this to really become something solid now this is just like a, a little bit of a line in the sand that we're gonna draw and see um, if it's going to hold or break you know, no big deal just uh, something fun to keep our eyes on um, now yeah what else do we get on the local lows um, all these here they're rubbish you know um, potentially already in the area to uh, to be hit so um yeah those are irrelevant right now um maybe maybe we want to take a look at the higher ranges because uh this is actually setting itself way apart and this could maybe indicate um how far price really needs to go for continuation to be in order um because I think this is going to be a big one. This is going to be something that we really need to keep our eyes on. And then, of course, here at the bottom, this bottom, this is a, a significant local low that uh, that will be the next level. You know, um, price can come down very easily, but um, yeah, all these areas already being met. Um, we do have a wide range of volume nodes over here and over here creating some support so yeah potentially you know potentially on the first glance i would say just uh, buy the dip like i said yesterday i don't think a meltdown is uh is in the charts uh, especially not on the one hour chart um we're gonna have to go a lot deeper than that to to get a better picture on what potentially could be happening but uh, you know let's just get started with uh, the areas of interest especially this high node over here and then this one over here and let's go from there all right so um the high one is sitting at 78.6 let's say oh 78 oh see point six and we got fifty five thousand three hundred. so yeah that's quite a push uh whoops <laughs> that's not what i meant to do uh let's do it like this fifty five thousand three hundred. oh look 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 at how it moved yeah, this is remember this is why i tell you all the time guys if you want to do this kind of analysis <clears throat> you need to do your analysis for yourself and reanalyze things every time you see something has changed on the chart i can't stress that enough uh, and in the meanwhile guys uh, there is a code coming your way so uh, yeah if you have your get dot incense.com page open get ready to fill that code out and re get your rewards free tokens yay <laughs> so in the meanwhile yeah so w o dash seven f three four n seven f thirty four n um now yeah let's uh let's look at these which is the lowest one of them 70 
43.8 and let's go with 42.7 42.2 but that would be 1000 <laughs> don't even think this has any kind of any but you know what let's uh, let's just put a box on it and let's see afterwards what we can do with this kind of Um, yellow, because it's the one hour chart. Yep. But, uh, yeah, potentially looking at the way this is going, I think I would rather go with this area over here. I think this one is the more relevant. Let's, let's have a look. Let's see what it, what it says. So 30.8. And over here, yeah, thirty point eight. And that would be forty nine thousand seven hundred. Uh, forty nine thousand seven hundred forty three or seven hundred fifty. That's good for me. Yeah. See what I mean? This looks way more relevant. And why? Because the other range <clears throat> just came uh, came in on the bottom of this volume node. And, you know, it feels just more, it makes more sense to me that if we break this, uh, this high um, node here on this, this chunk, this, uh, this little dildo that's sticking out, it feels more logical to see price actually dip down inside the range again um inside this uh this this range of uh, the two the two red trend lines and you know potentially touching the 48 49000 dollar mark would look like a, a really nice correction you know uh would look like it makes sense and we would be printing a nice bullish divergence with uh, with this area over here um, potentially scaring out a lot of people still maintaining the higher low and then build up for more uh, I would like this scenario I would really enjoy this um, but of course you know we're not dreamers um, what we do is just set ranges and then see what plays out so uh, let's look at the three hour chart. Let's see what the three hour chart has to say. And same thing, you know, this uh, this local low over here is the dominant one that sticks out. So yeah, I think I would prefer to get my read off of this one. Um, we could look at this one here as well, but I think this is the dominant one. So let's have a look, 42.2, huh, that's funny. And same thing, more or less, 49,550. That's actually very interesting how the three hour chart and the one hour chart kind of are in agreement. Now, uh, what happens if we bring this down a little bit more? The 49,000. Let's do 49,600, cut it somewhere in the middle. And yep, that's just sitting on top of this volume node over here. So this, this area actually does have a big potential to, to work as a support line. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit of time passing by so that we could actually just hit the 55 EMA on the three hour chart, uh, you know, I would not say no against it. Um, cool. But of course, 
very important is that uh, if we break this line, if we break the bottom of this candle, um, we could be in for a dive a lot deeper and actually start piercing under the 40k again. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. Okay, so let's uh, let's just have a look at the lower ranges, see what they have to say, um, especially this one over here. That's the predominant one. Um, it's not the lowest low on the RSI, and that's true. But uh, I think I would already be happy having a bullish divergence with this area. I think this would be a very, very big opportunity. Like, uh, if you don't jump on this one, then, uh, yeah, I, 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 would, I would not pass on this opportunity. So, let's have a look. Uh, 29.1. 29.1 um this would be oh my god 46300 what do you do with this ring this is this is okay so um obviously obviously the three hour chart is not gonna cut it uh let's go down to the five hour chart and same thing let's take this node at 33.8 on the five hour chart 33.8 same thing 46,300 like you know lord oh lord this is madness but still still even reaching there you know breaking below this big volume node you know i don't see I, it, it anything is possible of course you know but uh yeah i would expect price at least to retouch any of those areas um, if this happens so you know what let's go over to the 10 hour chart let's do it go big let's go big or go home um because this you know, there there is already like uh, yeah, three weeks from here to where we are right now. So let's let's go a little bit bigger, and we have thirty six point four. Let's do this thirty six point four. Okay, forty four thousand starting to narrow it down a little bit. Still not satisfied. Um, although would have a slight recovery with this area. You know what? I'm going to measure this out as well. Um, fifty six point seven. Let's see what this one does. <coughs> Oh my god, I'm so sorry. <coughs> yeah, this is what a dying man looks like. <laughs> so I've got to blow my nose again. I'm so sorry, guys. I hope you guys forgive me for this. As you can see, even half death. I will still be streaming, even though it, it doesn't look like much anymore right now. <laughs> Don't worry, Charles. I'm good. I'm really good. Um, wow. Just look at that. The 10-hour chart gives us an even wider range. Like, what is going on? What is going on? You know, look. This is what the 10 hour chart says for this area over here. It says like, uh, yeah, bullish potential bullish divergence coming in at uh, 49,900 something. Like, yeah, just when I see this, it's it's very hard 
to to believe that 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 the price will potentially even be able to break below this yellow one you know it's um this is impressive this is really such an impressive chart and i'm almost i'm almost scared to say this you know because yeah like <laughs> yeah how how do you get bearish on this situation you know um this is this is incredible whatever happens whatever happens i have a strong feeling that uh even if price dips down doesn't matter where the, the lower it goes the bigger you know i i would be longing just because i know that it's going to be picked up and it's really 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 going to be picked up i don't know if we're gonna make um, a new all-time high after we reach thirty-nine thousand, but uh, obviously um it has much more potential of being picked up and at least still making a big big attempt to higher ranges before even turning around and making a uh, lower um uh, lower lows or, or god knows what so yeah this is this is a very bullish chart no matter how it plays out you no know, i think this is somewhere where um, you know you would be crazy to try and short this like uh yeah you you could you could make money on the hero short uh, on the hero short that's what i call it the hero short like uh the guys with big pants really 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 hoping that it tanks but uh yeah it's uh on the way down it's going to be unpredictable uh you know there's so much potential for price to be picked up so yeah first range for me would be right here the yellow zone with uh with this uh this big volume node sitting here at uh, 39,500 down to uh, 49,500 down to 46,700 so yeah quite a delta quite a wide range but uh, eventually you know breaking down next area of support will still be my same uh, the same bias for me like somewhere just above the 39,250 um, maybe a little bit of a retest at 37,500 if if this happens okay don't say that I said it's gonna happen um, if if the yellow zone really breaks if the 46,500 area breaks then I do believe that uh, we might be retesting somewhere in the high 39,000s, uh, the 40,000 range somewhere, like uh, from 37.5 to 40,000, somewhere over there, with at least a retest, um, a confirmation that actually something of a bottom is found. Uh, and then, of course, you know, building up, and then we have to reanalyze the RSI and see whether um, bearish divergences are building up. The only thing, like I said, the only thing right now that gets me worried is that right now, on every time frame that we look, there is bearish divergence present. Potential bearish divergence. The only thing that can break it is if and when price keeps making higher lows higher highs and eventually making a higher low, uh, a higher high on both rsi and of course on price action we're already there so we really really need to see 55,500 being broken um until we can say like yeah strong continuation is in the charts um but even even from here you know a little bit of a pullback would be potentially picked up from any of these potential bullish divergences that are going to start forming um so yeah you know is it possible to be more bullish 
um, on the longer term? I don't know. On the short term, potentially some pullback. Ah, you know, I wouldn't say that it's going to happen, but there starts to be a, a larger chance of, uh, of, of a little bit of a pullback to happen. Hello, crazy videos. Hello, man. How are you doing? Hope you're doing all right. So, uh, yeah. No. Yes, guys. Exactly. Exactly. I keep forgetting this. Smash those likes, you know. Um, if you really enjoy this, uh, this content, you know, just uh, make the YouTube algorithm aware of this um, so that we get a little bit more reach and exposure. And this would only make our, fr our family grow. That would be very awesome. So, yeah, thank you. I, I need to, to have a rolling banner somewhere on the video. that You know, every interval of 10 minutes just says, like, smash the likes. Remember, smash the likes. Because I keep forgetting it. Uh, um, TRB. TRB. Is TRB a coin? Yeah, if, if you like, uh, I can have a look at TRB. Um, but uh, yeah, right now we're just uh, trying to make heads and um, trying to to make heads and tails from this entire situation. You know, it looks like so good to be true that um... okay, yeah, I will I will have a look also at the daily chart. We're gonna have we are gonna have to go over to even higher time frames. That's uh, it's a fact because. Uh, you know, all those ranges are so huge. It, it's really, like I said, it feels too good to be true. So, uh, yeah, maybe we want to have a look also at those lower areas over here. The, the low of the lows. Let's see what this one says. So 30,000, uh, no, 30.56. Okay, this says 41,000. So oh, yeah, still huge. Forty-one thousand hundred, and look at that. That's smack on that. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is your ten-hour chart. You know, good luck being bearish on that. Um, cool. In the meanwhile, you guys get your instant tokens. Um. Yeah, get the code um, W O dash O L Z two I. Um, I'm going to move over in the meanwhile to the twelve hour and the daily chart. Let's see what those look like. Um, potentially, potentially, yeah, there could be something of interest here. Yeah, as you can see, there is also bearish, potential bearish divergence present right here. This here just uh, printing higher highs, higher highs, higher highs, and just keeps making lower highs on the RSI. And what's also very, very interesting is that, look, the stochastics have just been holding this high level over here um you know this is this is an impressive impressive time to to be alive you know <laughs> uh, impressive time to be a day trader as well this is this is just crazy Any, anyway guys i hope you guys don't feel bad about taking profit you know, like i said this is, it doesn't matter. Chart goes up, chart goes down, chart goes sideways. Always make sure that you pocket your profit. And, you know, if the chart looks good, just fill up on every dip again, you know, and keep taking profit. You will make much more profit in the long run than just hodling. It's just a fact because you took your profit, even if it turns against you, your losses will be much smaller. So less tears, uh, which is also a good thing. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, let's just quickly look at those two local lows over here. Maybe this area could speak uh, some more, could bring some more clarity. Uh, this is the 12 hour chart. Uh, just trying to get 
uh, to make heads and tails from this entire situation. Um, so 37.7. This would be, yeah, 42,200 something. This doesn't change a bit. And 30. 33.9 This would be 40,000 Look at how I do it guys This is, it's, you know, as price goes down, is just one more potential bullish divergence after the other. So, yeah, you know, I think this, uh, the only thing that will be able to help us is, um, is looking at uh, the FIBS, the Fibonacci retracement tool. Uh, let's have a look here. What does this high say? 77.2, 77 77.3, 77.6. Yeah, you know, on this situation here, we're not in a local bearish divergence. There is bearish divergence from this area. Granted, that is, that is true. But as long as price doesn't dip down and make a new lower low um you know there's nothing nothing of concerns actually you know there is no reason to be bearish on on this situation so yeah where is your point of no return Thirty thousand. this is massive with all the potential areas to be picked up anyway so you know this is this is a dream come true and this is the daily chart keep in mind this is this is huge so yeah i'm going to take the fibonacci retracement tool and let's just have a look if this one is going to help us line up these things a little bit better uh where are we sitting right here there we go so yeah you know the 786 is sitting here on this huge volume node. The 618 is sitting on this volume node. Uh, the 5.0 is just at the edge. Uh, the 0 0.5 is just at the edge right here. So this entire volume node is actually a strong area. And then, of course, because this is such a wide range, the 236 could be your little anemic bounce or a continuation a, a just a quick continuation um so yeah just uh just what we needed to see like um yeah those would be the areas where i potentially would be putting my positions like uh, take a little bit of a short uh, a long adding up over here after rejecting this box at about 49,600 I could add up more of my long because uh, this would just confirm that this is your uh, your support area and if not if if uh, we break down or we see something like this happen at least you know the long that I entered right here would not be too massive and i would be able to hold on to it um just to wait and see where eventually price is going to be picked up and make this kind of formation so i think this would be my strategy personally uh for now looking at the way the chart is uh is going um, of course i'm still holding on to a little bit of a long because you know <clears throat> I've been taking my profits, uh, as should you, but uh, I, especially as long as the chart um, speaks more of uh, continuation, uptrend, and sideways, I am not inclined 
of closing my position completely. It's only if I really have a feeling that uh, that the chart is going to turn around or at least have a confirmation that the chart is turning around that uh, my long will be completely closed and then uh, you know I would wait for uh, for a high to show somewhere to start looking for a short but uh, yeah for me personally shorting is only in a confirmed downtrend um, I am always I've always been very unlucky um, trying to short a top especially after a, a prolonged uptrend um, because just those things are very unpredictable you know you don't know exactly how far it's gonna go down and then you know it gets picked up and the uptrend continues uh, same thing with uh, with the confirmed long-term downtrend once a confirmed long-term downtrend is uh, is in play then i would feel really really skeptical about using the short but uh, the long button because you just don't know if it's really going to keep going um you, the, the best way to do is uh, always to try and go with the trend even if you feel that on a pullback sometimes even a major pullback like uh, over here that was uh, from 42,000 all the way down to 30,000 yeah Jesus you could have made a killing but uh, who says or how do you know that it's really really going to go that steep uh, and not going to continue or you know yeah for me is just too much stress I prefer to go with the trend and just uh, if I see something break down this deep just to add up really much more and then let it ride especially like here we have this retest of the low zone there was a very nice confirmation to show that okay this is time to start going big so yeah I, I do prefer trading like this and then afterwards you just let it ride take your profit on every way down just add up and take your profit and just uh, you know take it easy as they say um okay so um yeah this is this is the best i can do for now um let's see if um the chart if uh, wow this is not what i wanted to do <laughs> let's see if uh bitcoin is going to manage to break the 55,500 or not um, or if by any chance we are going to move down um, potentially I think breaking the 51,000 area is where I would start to look for the lower areas already um, being the 49,000 in between you know 49,500 and uh, 46,500 um, if those break if those break then um, you know I hope you didn't go too big like I said if it comes here and you see that some support is starting to form you could enter along don't go too big wait until at least this box is being rejected that at least we are back above the 49,500 uh, so you can add on your long position okay it's going to drag up uh, your average a lot higher but at least you will be sure that you have a good play and uh, that there is going to be continuation um, out of this okay so you know you you want to wait for at least some confirmation or if you want to be really really safe then you can just wait wait and uh, see if it moves up same thing oh no? uh, it's it's the same idea just different way of approaching it there are so many ways of doing it uh mainly depending on your risk tolerance then uh, if we do see the price moving below this uh, this area like i said uh, my next area of interest 
would be sitting not really at the 41,000. I would keep my eyes open once we break this area, but uh, potentially I would be um, more inclined to see price then take some support over here at the 618. Um, I don't think the 786 would be hit just because all those areas are in bullish divergence, a potentially bullish divergence. Uh, the only thing that could actually create a bearish signal uh, that is if price does hit over here the 416, uh, 41,600, then bounce here against the 46,700 creating a continuation pattern and then eventually coming back down making something like this and then a lower low on both RSI and um and price action um but still, still, I don't think that we are really, really going to see things turn around that hard. You know, it could happen. It could happen. Uh, once we're here, we're going to have to look at uh, what is happening. Um, but it's not going to happen overnight. So, yeah, like I said, like I said, right now, this is a beautiful buy the dip situation. But don't add up too much when we hit the yellow zone and if we actually go back down be patient be very patient um, so that at least number one you can take the pain of seeing a red position because this is where your position is going to turn red you need to know this um, and wait to see if there is a confirmation that shows that the price is actually really being picked up. And then you, you can just add up big on your long, drag your complete entry all the way down, and then you will be very happy because you have a great, beautiful position. Um, would I put a stop loss? Because uh, like I said, chances are if we break below the uh let's say the 46,000 let's just call it the 46,000 i think uh this is more indicative um because uh yeah that would be the bottom of this volume node uh, would i put a stop loss honestly um i would not put but that's me okay i would not put an automatic stop loss because uh, i'm very afraid of uh, liquidity hunters just uh, you know knowing exactly where people would be putting their stop losses and then just pushing price down a little bit below to see it rise up because the stop losses hit they get extra liquidity they can enter really big and then just let the price ride up um, to 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 the heavens, you know. So me personally, I would just be waiting for a close, and then when the candles close, I would be looking at the indicators and reevaluate the situation, uh, rethink whether I uh, I would be um, letting go more of my position or uh, reevaluate my strategy. Um, yeah, remember, you always need to be very nimble uh, in your ways to manage your position uh, because, you know, the chart just has this habit sometimes of throwing bad curveballs at you. Uh, and the more you will be trade day trading, the more you know that this is just a part of the game uh, that we play. You know, trying to catch some curveballs, uh, trying to avoid balls and uh, still be able to make profit off of all these things that's uh, that's where skill really comes into play so yeah this is uh, this is kind of it for bitcoin i do believe sir yes sir uh, maybe we can drag this up a little bit look at how this 0 0.5 <coughs> actually lines up with the, uh, the 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 potential bullish divergence from uh, coming from this area 
on the 12 hour time frame this is this is wicked this is really wicked so yeah look this is bitcoin uh enough chit chat uh everything looking awesome um even if it goes down is just uh you know it's good it's good to be down that's what i would say uh, <laughs> all right so let's look at some altcoins uh let's uh, let's see crazy videos uh teller teller i have no idea what teller is but uh, i want to see i want to see what this is trb um is it okay is it okay if i look at trb over bitcoin because to me uh, this is what altcoins are for um, I love to train them against Bitcoin uh, just because um, I don't really see why um, why I would try to trade them against USD because Bitcoin is the big influencer um, if Bitcoin goes up of course of course they are going to go up together if bitcoin goes down of course they're going to go down but what matters is are they outperforming bitcoin or not and this is what the btc pair is for um so yeah in the meanwhile guys get your new next code uh it's rewards time and all you other viewers right now there's quite some viewers in the chat and only four likes you know remember to hit those likes buttons um you know it really really helps youtube realize that uh, people like this content okay so hit the likes smash the likes the code is w o dash c m b n zero c m b n zero free instant tokens don't let go this opportunity okay so um jesus who is sending messages like uh can't you see i'm streaming um yeah, this is the most unprofessional stream right now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, guys, remember, hit the likes, hit the likes. Come on, four likes. We can do better than that, right? Uh, in the meanwhile, let's have a look at ERB. On the one hour chart, I would say that this is looking actually... Wait, uh, no, it was looking good. There was a bullish divergence actually right over here. But um, chances are this entire uprun already played out the bullish divergence. I, I, it looks like it has played out so far uh, because from here on out, there is bearish divergence, bearish divergence, and price would need to be breaking the 0 0.00105. Yeah. Um, is it possible? It could happen. Um, but a little bit of a pullback, maybe finding some support here on the. What is this? Um, Nine point thirty-three, uh, thirty-two finis. That's that's what they say, right? Uh, three zeros and a digit is uh, is a finny. So 9.32 finis. Uh, yeah, potentially this could uh, this could happen. This could be your opportunity right here to get in on this area and then see what happens. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe it has a shot. Maybe has a shot. Honestly, yeah, I don't know enough about the project to 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 know what uh, what kind of progress they are making um in uh, in their development and all this stuff yeah awesome thank you guys thank you for the likes six likes we're building up guys cool you know re really this this just helps the youtube algorithm um forgive me uh for having added the monetization on the channel i don't do it for the youtube money it's just because i want to have some more reach uh, reaching some more um viewers um 
and you know build this community that we're building and i i strongly feel that uh, being monetized and allowing some ads to play on the channel would just uh, motivate the youtube algorithm at uh, at at suggesting the video and the stream so yeah i know kind of sucks it's youtube but uh, yeah that's that's just the way it is um so yeah you know um erb maybe maybe some opportunity uh coming your way uh let's look at the three hour chart let's see if the three hour chart looks uh looks the same uh yeah it does it really really does um yeah there could be continuation if there is some support right over here on this volume it's a big volume node it's a big one so uh there is a strong chance and uh on the longer term look at that look at how scary you know this this is like hitting down 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 finally making some higher highs and higher lows but uh, on the 10 hour chart this is uh, this is bearish divergences all around and potential potential new bullish divergences coming your way um yeah maybe maybe a little bit more of a pullback maybe some continuation after some support right here on the yeah 9.20 9.30 finis um and then of course off to the next area of uh, resistance being at the 15.38 um cool beautiful beautiful so um yeah tell me guys other other altcoins other shit coins like they say <laughs> in the meanwhile i'm gonna look at another shit coin the dollar uh, <laughs> let's see what the dollar has in store um yeah dollar has been wrecked right yeah I like to make fun of uh, all these thingies. But, uh, you know, when, when people are losing money, it's, it's no fun at all. So, you know, sometimes my jokes are a little bit <laughs> inappropriate. But hey, you know, come on. You know, it's crisis time. You know, you need at least to have a little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's crazy, right? Crazy videos. I have this bad flu cough thing and you know, nobody cares about it. You know, oh, it's not COVID. It's good. You're good, brother. Like, yeah, I know I will survive, but it sucks. <laughs> um yeah, dollar, dollar. Um maybe a little bit more correction to the downside looks like or maybe just not yeah crazy stuff um let's see what levels need to be broken at 71.30 32 71.32 um 91 uh, 91.6 now what we can remove this and just uh Yeah, potentially just making a higher high and, and we're good or the dollar is good now is this going to happen um maybe a little bit in stair steps maybe 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 could be because there is uh, already a little bit of a bullish divergence and this is a 10 hour chart so pretty strong chart um yeah let's see what happens if if the dollar gets down to let's say or the dixie gets down to 90.5 i think the next area of interest would be 90.3 of course if this one breaks um 
yeah we're gonna have to we will be seeing some more continuation to the downside i do believe um but it's a make or break situation right here um of course the range down is a lot closer than the range to break to the upside the good thing is that there is potential support um you know because it's a more traditional market there could be something like this happening finding support on this level here the ema 200 but uh yeah you know as you can see all the uh, exponential moving uh averages are upside down and you know once they turn upside down flipping them all the way around just doesn't happen overnight um so yeah their dollar is in for either a lot of effort to make a recovery and turn this picture uh, around um but uh yeah it's not gonna be easy that's that's for sure let's look at the e-mini futures you know always funny to see what the e-minis are doing um usually doing the exact opposite of what the dollar does but uh crazier things have happened let's uh let's just remove this all this is old news so on the 10 hour chart potential potentially some bullish divergence potentially uh, and this would actually agree with uh, with what we're seeing on the dollar, where the dollar is, I would say there's a 60% chance that it goes more down, 40% chance that it goes more up. While here, I would actually, you know, nothing is confirmed, of course, but looking at uh, how there is support on this major volume node and already potentially um, a bullish divergence uh, being possible i would say like this uh, you have to be very careful with the words that you choose sometimes um i would lean at a 60 percent chance of seeing more highs uh rather than lows so yeah you know uh, and and this is fun you know the dollar and um and e-mini futures usually are inversely correlated just because you know it's traditional markets and they get traded against uh against the dollar uh finally let's have a look at the dominance let's have a look at the dominance and like i was saying um the days before i am looking at uh at trying to figure out if we can use divergences also on the dollar uh, on the dominance uh, as more specifically the rsi divergence with the dominance now you can't call it price action it's not really price action it's dominance action um so yeah this will be the time to shine this will be the time to see if it actually works or not um because right now um on the highs still a lower high over here this is a 12 hour chart okay still a lower high while here there is what we could call a bearish divergence present so potentially potentially there could be pressure down although although on the short term there is some potential bullish divergence over here um i think it could break as soon as the dominance dips below um let's call it 60 uh, 60 ish percent um so yeah there there also is a large chance for the dominance to start coming down which could be really good for the altcoins of course on the btc pairing remember that always remember that bitcoin dominance coming down great opportunity to get more btc out of your altcoins but if the bitcoin price goes down with it 
your USDT pairing or USD pairing with the altcoins could just level out and not move at all or come down as well. So yeah, you know this is uh, this is why for me altcoins. I keep saying it. Uh, the BTC pairing is more important to me than uh, than the than the USD pairing. Um, now what else? What else can we look at? Um, stochastics are looking like they are ready to reject the high level um, and looking at how we have been seeing lower highs and lower lows chances are i think like there's bigger probability of uh, bitcoin dominance going for lower lows again um cool so yeah i think uh, i think this is more or less what i wanted to go over so yeah like i said on the bitcoin chart and here's your little recap so spoon boys spoon boys if you're used to watching the channel then uh, you know that at the end of the video is where i do a little bit of a recap this is uh, where the spoon boys want to get their information of course, you know, trading um, Spoon Boy information is at your own risk because what I prefer for you is to learn to search for these areas and analyze them yourself and then make up your own darn opinion. It's your money, okay? Your money, your gains. If you make profit, it was not because of me. Maybe because I showed you some tricks that could help you. But same thing, if you lose money, I'm not responsible over that as well. I'm just here to help you analyze this thing your way. So uh, let's have a look. Code, let's do the codes. W-O-N-K-L-X-N. N-K-L-X-N. There you go, guys. Have some free tokens. Um... So the one hour chart says on the high end that Bitcoin will need to break 55,500-ish for a continuation to be possible. Now, just holding a little bit in this area is not a bad thing. What would be bad is actually coming out of this area and retesting the low ends. Okay, this is where you're going to have to reanalyze what is happening. Now, on the low end, on the downside, same thing goes. Breaking the, let's call it 50, 50,800 area. This is where I would be looking for at least some support in either the 49,000 area or the 48 to 47,000 area. Don't go too big because if we trend down below there, your confirmation will be once we get above at least the 49,000 area. Getting above 49,000 you know, there might be some support, retest it, and then just trend and go up. Okay, so why would I not go big too quickly? Because if there is a little bit of a support and an anemic bounce and then creating another lower low, potentially we could see things trend down even further. There is some support here at the 45,000. There is some more support at the 40,000 area and of course the big one 37,500 this is uh, this would be like uh, the biggest area of support what are we waiting for then don't jump in too quickly because even if we reach this low the only thing that can reassure you that it's going to hold is if and when we see a retest of the lower area followed by a bearish di a bullish divergence or even a an equal low 
on the RSI. Okay, so be patient, be careful, especially if we break down those area. My suggestion, my advice would be, if you really want to try your shot at taking a long here on the way down, go nice and slow, make so that it's still a position that even worst case scenario, you feel comfortable to lose and forfeit. Like I said, on the way up, there is going to be some confirmation and at least at the breakout of 49,000, let's say 49,350. This is where you can really start to believe that it's going to keep on going because we have this bullish divergence that is confirmed. Um, so if you had a big position here and it goes against you, it could hurt much more and this is where your sentiments and your fears and all these things are going to take the overhand you might end up doing something bad and stupid because even if we break down this low there's going to be even more time to decide whether it's going to hold or not okay so this is my quick advice uh this is how i would play this kind of situation um of course you know it's all up to you these things are very personal but uh, i think those will be the levels that i will be looking for so just a short recap again i hope you can see the levels that are marked off over here in the sideline 55,500, um, 49,900 for the yellow box coming down to the local low of February 15. And then right here, these areas are actually equal to the support lines, um, the, the highs uh, that we find in the past over here on January 9, uh, 29 and February uh, 04. So this would be the range where I would be expecting um, at least a retest before a decision is made in price action. So there you go, guys. I hope this was helpful. Um, I'm sorry that I was a little bit under the weather like a little bit much <laughs> but yeah you know this is life this is life anyhow i was really happy to share some insights in how i would be trading this situation and i hope this uh, this helps you also on your way to becoming a better and more um independent trader and of course, you know, if you want to be part of our close inner circle, the gang of wolves, I do have a Discord channel. And to access that channel, instead of uh, asking for a subscription fee or membership or God knows what, what I prefer to do is uh, just ask the members to sign up to Bybit using our affiliate link because like this I can know for sure who are the active traders uh, and I can keep out the riffraff trying to you know spoil the the channel with uh, trolling and all that stuff my intention is not to get like a hundred or two hundred three hundred member discord that's madness I don't like it and I don't want it what I want is a group of people that are there for each other and that really want to help each other. Now, what better motivation is there than knowing that I do give back a portion of the affiliate revenue to the more active traders? And, you know, this is kind of like a little bit of a competition. Um, you try to be a good trader. You try to get some information. Other people ask for information and they help you because this just fills up the pot. And I think this is the nicest way to, to have a group that is actually motivated at doing the right thing. So if you think this is something for you and you want to give it a shot, it's not going to cost you anything. The only thing you want to do is just sign up to Bybit using the affiliate link. After that, you send me an email with this form um, 
saying who you are, your nickname, preferably your nickname here on YouTube, so I know who you are, uh, email address that you used, and maybe also in the message at the user ID number, uh, so I can identify you on the platform. Good thing is you're gonna get a bonus for registering and your first deposit. There are many, many other cash bonuses uh, that we run on Bybit. Uh, they have a great support. They have an awesome platform. Um, they barely are under attack. And if you're scared of KYC, the good thing is there is no need for KYC there. So even you guys, Americans, uh, using a VPN, you are very welcome to join this platform um now you know give it a try you like it you like it you don't like it you didn't lose anything but uh, if it's somewhere scratching in the back of your head i would say what are you waiting for all right so on that note on that bombshell uh, i'm going to log off um i'm going to sign off um what did i say what did i forget to say yeah the website the url for the website it's very easy just the uh, wolves of bybits.com just like it says in the bottom of uh of the video all right and it's also in the description so there you go guys thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed it tomorrow uh i think i'm going to stick to this regiment i think i'm going to stick to this time frame 17 uh, UTC I'm not working so I will be a lot more fresh and funky um, unless something gets in the way um, but uh, yeah if you're subscribed to YouTube and you hit the bell notification you should know exactly when I announce my uh, my live stream to happen and then I hope to see you guys tomorrow uh, thank you very much have a great one good luck with your positions. I wish you all the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest, the greatest opportunity trades and all that good stuff. And I'm signing off right now because I'm going to keep rambling on. Thank you very much, guys. Bye-bye.